I'm Konstantin Hohmann, I'm the product manager for Precision Seeders in the factory located in Soest here in Germany and I want to give you some details today about our combination of the f fertilizer front hopper and our Optima F with SX high speed sewing units in the back. We use on this machine f Singer as we call it, so an f fertilizer hopper with only one metering unit, one Eldos metering unit with all the features that are well known for the Eldos. And this, this hopper that you see here is a small one with the compact one with 1,600 liters. There's also the second execution with 2,200 liters available. You see here, there is no front packer assembled, but we also have the possibility to add three wheels in there, which are steerable to have a nice balancing on the whole machine. I think more interesting is really what we see here in the back of the machine. That's our Optima F-frame with SX sewing units. So Optima F, F is for fold, it's a 6 meter foldable frame which we can equip with either 8 or 12 row units. So we can uh, do row distances of 75, 76.2, 80 centimeters with 8 rows or with 12 rows 45 or 50 centimeters like we have on this machine here. We have the, the sewing unit, for example for corn sewing, for bean sewing, for sunflowers, soybeans. Um, in general, we couldn't do everything from rapeseed to sunflower. So we have the seed application in here. You see we have a second single hopper on it, or little hopper on it. With, this is the, our micro drill. The micro drill there we can applicate in parallel also micro granulates, like um, micro fertilizer as a starter. In some countries also insecticides are popular to applicate them during, during the seeding operation or um, some fungicides are very popular. They are blown into the seeding furrow, so directly in touch, in contact to the seeds. As an alternative, we can also put some slug pellets on top as an on-top application. That is the micro. Seed roller unit is later. And in front, here we have our fertilizer coulter. And with the fertilizer coulter, we can applicate some starter fertilizer to give really the crop a head, a major start into life, yeah. And this fertilizer colder is usually located five centimeters next to the seeding row and it should be also five centimeters underneath the seeding so that we have a nice, nice pulling force for the roots to go deeper into the soil to grow to the water level. I like to open it and explain it. The fertilizer from the front hopper comes always via this hose to the colder. That is nothing special. Every machine can it can do that. But now there comes a special thing in the in action. This is this brush valve as we call it. So we have this conical brush here and when the fertilizer is coming it's at first collected and stored on this brush. And it's stored as long on this brush until this pneumatic valve is opening and shooting it with an air shot through the brush into the furrow. Of course people are asking how, how does this uh, valve know when to open or when to close. So to synchronize those two we use the data of this optoelectronic sensor. So always when the seed is dropping into the furrow, also the valve gets a signal to open, to open the brush, to put a depot in there. We have had different requirements for, for this Pudama system. The first requirement was we don't want to slow down with the machine. We want to have the same efficiency as before. Or this valve combination is able to do until 25 shots every second. So working with 25 hearts. This is, this is about 1,500 shots in every minute. So really, really a lot. But this guides us that we can still operate this machine with, for example, 14 kilometers per hour. In addition, we want to be as gentle as possible with the fertilizer. We want to keep the structure of the fertilizer, not just blowing any dust or mill, uh, flour or whatever into the furrow. And uh, therefore, we are really gentle with this brush. We have no mechanical parts that destroy the fertilizer. And mechanical parts is the next topic. We don't have many mechanical parts on it, so we don't have any wearing, any friction, any milling on it. So this is really the, the three big advantages that we have here in our system. And by the way, this combination of an air shot and this special brush is patented by Cranland, so very, very exclusive only on Cranland machines. 
So what is the main reason for fertilizer? We noticed during some trials that fertilizer is not always 100% available for the plant. There is really an agronomical or better a plant reason for it. We have here on a picture a corn plant that is about three to four weeks old. And you see that the roots are growing only in, in a triangle of about 10 centimeters width. By typical application of 90,000 seeds, that's typical in this area, maybe in Africa, I guess it's less. Maybe you're doing 75,000 on a hectare. In 75 centimeters row distance, there is a distance of about 15 or 70,000 seeds, even about 18 centimeters in between two plants. Now we have seen 10 centimeters of roots, but 15 or close to 20 centimeters of distance between two plants. So this means when you have a constant fertilizer application, you're missing some fertilizer in between, which is not available for the plant. And with Pudama, we can really concentrate all the fertilizer in a depot underneath each and every plant. And this is a big advantage. And due to our examinations that we did um, in the first years, we have the thesis that you can save up to 20 or that you can save at least 25% of fertilizer by using Pudama. And of course, if a company like Quernland is doing those trials, in Germany, a South African farmer will not trust it or not rely it, so we try to extend it to more countries and with external partners. So we, we did, of course this is in Europe, but we did in Europe 22 trials with uh, corn and sunflowers, with and without Pudama, different amounts of fertilizer, and we did this with external stakeholders, so with universities, with fertilizer companies and with seed producers, to have an, as objective feedback as possible. Those corn is still growing, so we will present the results on Agritechnica in November on Monday at 10 o'clock on our booth. Next to it, we want to underline that we have three main pillars for, for Pudama. So the first pillar is that we have this agronomical background, really to give the plant a major start, make all the fertilizer that we applicate available. The second pillar is an ecological one. You can imagine if you have fertilizer in field that is not available for the crop, it's washed out. So we have uh, nitrogen or phosphatus going to the groundwater and that's what we don't want to have. We really keep this fertilizer available for the plant or we keep it at home. And the third reason is really the economic one. And for the farmer, for Mr. Farmer, this is always the most important one. He wants to earn money with this technique. If you imagine that he's saving 25% of fertilizer and we can do an easy calculation about it. If he usually is bringing 200 kilograms of fertilizer per hectare in the field and now he's saving 25%, he's saving about 50 kilograms on every hectare. That sounds not that much, but if he's doing, for example, 100 hectares, that will be already five tons. If he's doing 200 hectares, it will be 10 tons. And if he's doing 400 hectares, it will be already 20 tons. So 20 tons of fertilizer in a year by a price of 600 euros per ton, what is typical in Germany at the moment, that's already saving 12,000 euros per year only by this 25% of fertilizer. And um, with this 12,000 euros of um, savings, you need about two, two and a little bit more than two years of operation until you have a positive return of invest for this Pudama technique as a Pudama technique is also costs some money. But you need a little bit more, that's approximately the calculation between 800 and 1000 hectares until you have a positive return of invest. So from my point of view, I'm very excited about Pudama. They talked about you, you have an input cost, but just with a zap of a finger, you know, you get those, those costs back and you can just build and be profitable from there going forward. So I think Pudama is for me very exciting. Just the quality of the products that they have, um, I think it's very important for us and we've got a high standard, you know, from a Jupiter point of view, going into South Africa and Africa as well. We, we want to make sure we have robust machines you know, and I think that was shown in the field as well. But I think really the most important of the machine, as we also say, the, the heart of the machine, the seed heart, that's, that's our SX sewing unit. The row unit itself, always parallelogram linked to the mainframe and then you have optionally and hydraulic ballasting, which is really comfortable because you can adjust it on the go from the cabin. This hydraulic ballasting system has also the advantage that it cannot go only pressure to the row unit, 
with the spring next to it, we can also release some pressure. So in really light conditions that you don't have any bulldozing effect. So this, as it is assembled here, is from minus 30 kilograms, which you can release, up to 100, 120 kilograms, which you can press on the roll unit. Then the roll unit itself, it's guided by these two gauge wheels. We use open gauge wheels. That has the advantage if there is any dirt on the discs. This is rubbed off by the, by the gauge wheels. It can drop out of the rim, that you don't block your rim from the inside. Those are oscillating and stepless, adjustable for the working depths with this handle. Then we have this two cutting discs, and the cool cutting discs are opening the furrow for the seats. And in addition, there's always a little colder in the furrow which cleans really the, the bottom of the furrow, that the seats have the best seat to soil contact, that they are not lying on a loose ground, that they are really lying on the tough soil, that they have immediately contact to the soil and immediately access to water. Then we have this catching wheel, which are catching the seats and pushing them into this nice tight soil. And we have the V-press wheels for closing the furrow which can be ballasted in three steps and where the angle can be set from collecting the soil onto the furrow or just parallel pressing, pressing next to the furrows. But now coming really to the seat heart, the SX seat heart. SX stands for speed and X for geo seat, which is possible with this seat heart. It's a pressurized seat heart. So pressurized means we are not sucking the seats to the disc, we are pushing them by air pressure to the disc. Um, then we have this electric driven disc inside with two singulators, the first for singulation, the second one for putting all seats in the same direction. And then we are shooting also with air support the seats through the tube into the furrow. There will be a speed about 70 kilometers, 80 kilometers per hour on the seats. And during this, this shoot into the furrow, there is an optical sensor inside. And this optical sensor is not only possible to detect misses, but also doubles. This is really an advantage, because if you didn't set your seat out in a proper way and you have some doubles, it's, they are also detected, so that you can correct, and have the full control and field. So this row unit is able to go to speeds up to 16, 18 kilometers per hour, if you, if you like, and if the soil, the field is ready for it. But you can also operate with very low speeds. This is the biggest advantage in comparison to competition because they can do only quick um, services, only quick operation. We can also go down. Now I'd like to show you also the inside of our SX sewing hut. So we open it. We have two parts. We have on the one hand the cover. Here comes the, the air stream. And here come the seats in. And the seats are here placed on a level. And then the seat, this is turning. And by the pressure of the air, the seats are pushed to the disc. And we're always using a stainless steel disc because those are very slow. And then we have the singulator. The first singulator is really for ensuring that you have always one seat per hole. And the second singulator is responsible that all seats are approximately in the same direction. So that you have a very, very even germination of the seats. And then down here, and you can see it on the disc, the hole is closed from the back. So there we have an airstream interrupter. So no airstream anymore is pushing the seat to the disc, it's falling off and at the same time the pressurized air inside is taking the seat, sucking it and shooting it into the furrow. Through the sensor, you see every seat is detected by the sensor and uh, then it's shooting into the furrow. Our seaters are all equipped with an electric drive where you have close to no maintenance on it, so you don't have to grease any chains, you have no sprockets that you have to change, nothing. It's really easy to adjust and to maintain. And also in here, you have really good access to the, to the seat disc and to the, to the sewing unit. So it's also easy to clean it after the season or when you have to check something during the season. This seat disc that we have here in is uh, made for corn. Of course, when you have different crops, always depending on the, on the size of the diameter of the seats and on the amount of seats per, per hectare, per square meter, we have different discs available. So, Special discs for rape seeding, for bean seeding, for peas, for um, peanuts even, um, for corn, uh, sugar beet, whatever. So we have a wide, wide range of discs available for different operations. Here you see our 60 liters seed hopper. As we have a pressurized system for our seed heart, we have to seal our hopper and that's the reason why we have this sealing inside here, which seals the hopper 100%. 
on the one hand that no pressure is coming out, but on the other hand, of course, also that no dirt is coming in. In the last step, I'd also like to show you how easy it is to exchange the seaters. Therefore, you just have to block it. And when it's blocked, you can use a standard spanner with 32 millimeters to unmount it, or you can use our special tool. On the seat disc, you see we have always this um, bracket for the spanner. spanner. Um, you see the holes. Now it's a 32.55, so 32 holes and a 5.5 millimeters diameter. And this is like an agitator disc that the seats always stay in motion, that they are not blocked inside. Yeah, and here on the seat heart, now you can see really nice these uh, Airstream interrupter. And really the special thing what makes us proud is that we have very, very low friction, low torque in the seat heart. And the main reason for that is you've seen there are no ceilings inside and the seat is, is never touching a ceiling. So this is just in the center there's a bearing and that is sealing the, the complete seat heart. This disc where we mount the or this bowl where we mount the disc to is turning absolutely freely so we have very, very low power consumption and very, very low torque. That is also the reason why our planters don't need any generator on it. So we never use a generator, we just use the power of the tractor. As we are working here with an, uh, with an uh, pressurized uh, precision planting system, we, we need to get the air from somewhere. And we made a lot of tests and we want to have as clean air as possible, that we have less dust, less residues in it. And that's the reason why we decided to have this, this long pipe here. So the air is sucked at the silver part of the pipe, where we notice that there is as less, as less uh, dust as possible, so that the air is as clean as possible. Yeah, so I think if you look at the, the, the technology that's on the market today, I think in Africa, you know, we, we're only using a little portion of that. So it makes me very, very exciting, you know, of what's coming. Europe is really on the forefront of uh, technology. So we should make use of that in Africa for our African agricultural farmers, especially the commercial guys. And, and we should use that. And I, and I think, you know, with what's coming now going forward in the next four or five years until, you know, 2030 and beyond, that's something that we really should capitalize on. Yeah.